Hello, everyone. I'm Colin Tesla, Grouseland.com, joined by Colby Carino, here ahead of NWA Hard Times 3 on November 12th. Colby, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing today, Colin? Good. Thanks for asking. Thanks for taking the time. Like I said, big pay-per-view event this weekend. NWA going to New, or- New Orleans for Hard Times 3, where you will be challenging Davey Richards for the NLW National Openweight Championship. We're going to talk all about that. I guess first and foremost here, just sort of, sort of the obvious, you're wrestling for the NWA, a company that has a very you know proud history in the, in the wrestling world. Those three letters mean quite a lot, dating back decades. So what does it mean to you to be working for the NWA, competing in the NWA ring? Because you, you've already been working there for a number of months now. So just being a part of that roster. That was like uh, one of the fir- the things that drew me into the NWA was um, like their their history and like how much they pay respect to their history. Like um, one of my one of my favorite championships is the NWA Junior Heavyweight Title, and uh, like just looking at the lineage of that, it's a Shinjiro Tani, it's Jushin Thunder Liger, it's Dory Funk Junior. Like there's so many all time greats that, and now and and now I have opportunities to be able to add my name to that list, and that's like a, a very special opportunity for me. What do you, I mean, other than the history you mentioned, you mentioned the lineage, what do you kind of makes the NWA stand out uh, in, in the wrestling world today? I mean, obviously it's a very crowded landscape, a lot of companies, all, and any number of them uh, are doing great things in their own right. And they're always putting on a product that it kind of uh, holds to be very unique in a, in a number of ways. So as someone that's, uh, that's part of that roster, how does NWA kind of stand out to you? And, or uh, what does NWA kind of do maybe that some other companies are, are not doing? The appeal to for NWA to me is that that old school feel and uh, it's it's it, that sports presentation like New Japan has that, but I feel like it's something that a lot of like American companies uh, lack is is like a, a real. It seems like a more more drama focus rather than like sports competition focus, and that's what I really like about the NWA is that we are like at the core of it is pro wrestling is a sport and, and it is a competition, and that's how the NWA presents it, and that's very appealing to me. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and I do want to take a moment just to kind of w- uh, walk through your, your journey through the NWA so far. Uh, you've been aligned with the, the fixtures at different points. You and now you mentioned that uh, you've been you've been interested in the, in the junior t- title as well. Uh, so just kind of starting off, uh, just being in the, in the NWA. Uh, how's how's your, your your journey in the company been up to this point? Uh, where you know now you're going to be facing Dave Richards. Like, do you imagine when you're challenging for a title, not even for the, the NWA, but for the MLW and and MLW title uh, on the NWA show? Like, just was that something you kind of thought that might be uh, even a possibility when when you first arrived in the, in the NWA? Uh, well, when I first came to the NWA, like I was, I was kind of like tunnel vision. Like I was there to win a championship. I was there to like just make sure I wasn't another guy, and that was uh, like, and that I was going to cement my my place in history. And uh, but if you would have asked me a, like a year or two ago, if I if you th- if I would have been wrestling for the an MLW title on an NWA pay per view, definitely would not have said yes. But the world, world works in mysterious ways, you, you know. I mean, it's definitely, I think it's, it's a sign of the times uh, of the rest of the world these days. Companies working together a lot. Titles being defended on, on other companies' shows. Uh, it opens up a lot of possibilities. It opens up a possibility, in this case, for you to face Davey Richards, uh, an absolute veteran, very, very uh, renowned performer in, in the wrestling world here. When the, mounts, when the match was first announced, you uh, tweeted about it and you called it a dream match. So I, I based on just those two words, it would seem that this match uh, would mean quite a lot to you. So what does it mean to you uh, to be facing a, a talent of, of Davey Richards' caliber? So, uh, like, I've been watching Davey Richards ever since I was a little kid. and. Um, like I didn't watch a lot of TV wrestling growing up. I didn't watch a lot of WWE or WCW or TNA when it was on because uh, like I, I always watched what my dad was on. My dad was in Japan or on the Indies. So I feel like I have a lot of different perspective, like growing up, like I didn't grow up watching uh, that, that awesome Batista versus John Cena match from 2006 or whatever uh, people I've, I haven't seen a lot of that stuff, but someone like David Richards, he was a guy that I was around uh, a lot as a, as a kid and just, he was one. He was my favorite performer as a kid. Like he brought everything that I wanted in pro wrestling. He brought it to the table. The he's hard hitting. He's intense. All his matches had that sports uh, competition like feel that I was t- talking about earlier. And he's like a Davey Richards match to me is what pro wrestling should be personified. And that's it, it means so much to be able to wrestle Dave Richards on a big platform like NWA on a major pay per view. 
Do you view yourself as the underdog in this case for all those reasons, for the fact that, you know, the, the experience advantage for, uh, as you just mentioned, that he kind of embodies what you think a wrestling match should should have in it? Uh, how, how What's your kind of mindset surrounding the match in, in, in that perspective? So, I mean, like, I feel like a lot of people would look at me as the underdog, um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't think I feel exactly the same way because I, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life right now. I'm doing the best work of my life. I'm doing the most training and weightlifting and in, uh, in wrestling ring training that I can do. And, and the questions that I've been having for me is that can 39 year old Davey Richards keep up with Colby Carino? That's, that's the real question that I've been asking myself. So maybe, uh, maybe I, I don't view myself as the underdog. You mentioned earlier uh, with NWA, you mentioned New Japan as well. So some, that style of wrestling maybe presented as sports. Sometimes when I'm doing these kind of interviews, talking about uh, specifically a match, I like to look at like the sports aspect, like the keys to victory here, like, like a football game. So when you're, when you're heading into it, uh, this match here, what are maybe some of your keys for victory here? As you mentioned, some people might view the U.S. underdog here, but even outside of that, just in general, when you're putting this match with a guy like Dave Richards, uh, what, what are you kind of looking to do here uh, when you're uh, up against a, a veteran like him to get in order to win the match? Oh, obviously, I'm ready to get hit very hard. <laughs> and, and if anyone's watched Dave Richards, they know that he, he brings it every time he steps in the ring. And uh, But if anyone's watched Coley Crano, they know that I, I bring it every time I step in the ring, too. So I'm not too worried about that. I know I can get I can get my ass beat a bit and uh, you know I can beat some ass, too. Um I've been I've been definitely working on my my chain wrestling and my submission game. Obviously, uh, I'm not going to be able to pack in as much skill as as he will in the short time that I've had to prepare. But I think that I will have enough to make myself not look like an idiot out there with him, you know. Um, and then you know, there's always an unpredictable element that Colby Carino brings in that I think you have to watch out for because you never know where my matches will go. I, I I feel like that's a that's one of my the the best parts of watching Colby Carino match is that it's very unpredictable. Like you, you never know what's going to happen. There's always going to be something crazy. That there is. That there is. I mean, you mentioned your father earlier, so you want to lean into that side of things. So you're a part of a, a prestigious wrestling family. Your father, Steve Carino, a legend. Your your aunt, uh, Allison Danger slash Kathy Carino, a, a, a legend and veteran in her own right. Does that? have any pressure for you going to be part of that family or how does that i just how does that impact you as you're now uh carving out your own name here uh, as, the, as an individual rather than just uh, an extension of that family i did i definitely feel pressure but i don't think it's a it's an external pressure like i don't feel the pressure from other people putting it on me i feel for myself putting it on because i want i want to be able to live up and i want to be able to exceed what my family's already done I don't want to just be looked at as just like a, a lesser model that just a, a wash, not a, not washed up, a washed down version of whatever they were. I want to be the best form of Colby Carino that there is. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job at that. Like, uh, I feel like my work is a lot different than what my aunt or my dad did. But like, there's always uh, those Carino traits that you can see with all three of us. But um, I, I definitely feel the pressure, but it's like a good pressure that motivates me. Has that changed at all as, as you've kind of conti uh, continued on in, in your wrestling journey here compared to when you started? Like, has it gotten easier or has your, your mindset changed? As I imagine, when you're first breaking into the business, maybe you might look at it differently. Whereas as you gain more experience, that might that might sh uh, shift in terms of how, how you look at, uh, again, that that pressure or that, that the possibility of there being pressure, being, being part of that family within the business. Uh, actually it's weird because like when I started out, I didn't feel that pressure at all because like I grew up around wrestling and the, like all the people that I was surrounded by were like super supportive and super nice. And like, I didn't, I didn't, they didn't have the chance to, or they did have the chance, but they just didn't exert that pressure on me. But as I grew older, like I started to, to realize what being a part of like such a prestigious family means at, to like myself and to the, the general public. So it, it, I sort of started putting that pressure on myself to to live up to it and to surpass the name. Uh, we're talking about your family here and you're going, uh, sorry, you, you, you teamed up with with uh, Allison Danger, your aunt here at, at the Painted Black event in October. Uh, what was that experience like? Because you're talking about maybe uh, not feeling that pressure, but still, you know, the, at least for, from, from a fan perspective, there is that association, you know, Colby Carino, Steve Carino, uh, Allison Danger, you know, that, that family. What, what was it like kind of getting to team up with her in a match 
uh, uh, given her, her impressive accomplishments in, in the business and uh, as, as you continue on as well, just being able to team, share them with her uh, at a show like that. It was amazing to be able to share that that time with my aunt because uh, like when she retired, I, I never thought she would get back in the ring again. I thought that like she because it didn't look good uh, medically for her when when she quit like nine years ago. And um, it like I was like, man, like I'm never going to have the opportunity to, to get in the ring with her. And uh, she didn't want to at first uh, when I first brought the idea for the pain and the black event. She did not want to do it. But I bugged her enough that uh, I think uh, eventually she just did it to shut me up and I think it turned out very well. I thought it should seem like she had a lot of fun and I don't want to speak for her or anything, but hopefully this isn't the last time you see her in a wrestling ring because she did great and she had a lot of fun. I was about to say, do you think you could bug her enough to go to another match with her of, of some capacity? Like you mentioned, maybe just you, you took it more general, but like, would you want to, or would you, would you try to uh, share them with her again uh, in, in some capacity, be it another tag team match or, or, or something, uh, whatever, whatever it might be? What is that something you might be interested in or something you might look to do in the future? Oh, I would love to team up with her again, but uh, maybe not just as a tag team. But maybe as a six man tag or six person tag with my father too. There you go. Maybe we can extend that to eight with a uh, Ari or ours with uh, my uncle too. But I think he's going to be a little uh, harder to get in the ring. He he's a bit more stubborn than the rest of us. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think he's kind of out of pro wrestling for now. <laughs> but six man tag that's off the table for right now. But maybe only slightly off the table. <laughs> Regardless, I imagine that was definitely a big kind of, you know, check it off your list of things you, you might want to do in your wrestling career. And you're taking these strides here in the NWA and beyond. You're going to be challenged for your title this weekend. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. But uh, again, teaming with, teaming with your aunt here, challenging for a title, taking strides here. Uh, what are some of your goals here moving forward in the NWA and wrestling in general? Uh, you can short term, long term, whatever it might be. What are some of the things you kind of uh, have your, your sights set on as, as you keep going here? Uh, I mean, in the NWA, like the ever since it was announced, like that junior heavyweight belt has felt like it has been Colby Carino's belt, even though that I haven't had it yet. I, I just know that, like, I feel like my destiny in that belt is intertwined. And one day I'm going to get a belt. And you can put this in the headlines that one day Colby Carino will win that junior heavyweight belt. I'm calling my shot right now. And then, uh, but outside of that, I don't know. Like, I'm really, I'm really planning for 2023 to be a huge year for me. I got a, couple things in the slow cooker i uh, don't want to reveal it to you yet before it's ready to be tasted but you know i got i think it, anyone who's a colby carino fan is gonna be very excited at whatever happens for me in 2023 because i've got a got a few cool things cooking up very much looking forward to seeing what those might be when they're when they are fully cooked up when they were on you ready to reveal them uh, but you mentioned Colby Carino fans, people that are very familiar with their work. Uh, for people that may not be, right, you're still fairly new in the NWA, or people, let's say someone who's never even watched NWA, may not be very familiar with your work this weekend. Uh, do you have any matches that they might be able to, to seek out in the NWA or, or elsewhere that you kind of hang your hat on and say, like, this, this is me, this is Colby Carino, this is a match I'm proud of, this showcases uh, what I can do as a wrestler, any, any matches that you're you know, yeah, particularly proud of that you would point those fans to to kind of showcase uh, and your your abilities or just anything you're particularly proud of. Oh, 100%. Um, if you've never watched a Colby Carino match, you can go on YouTube right now. You can punch in Colby Carino versus Homicide, and you can find me challenging for the junior heavyweight belt for the first time. I was very, very proud of that match. Anytime I lock up with Homicide, I feel like it's something special. Like, we just, we just make a sort of magic in the ring. Um, and that for the first time was no exception. Um, also on YouTube, I, well, if you watch NWA, you can see me do a very pro wrestling style. But uh, if you've ever seen me on the Indies elsewhere, uh, you might know that I get I dip in my toes in some hardcore and deathmatch stuff. Uh, so if you go on to YouTube, you can find Colby Carino versus Cruel, uh, who is uh, Mads Kruger on MLW. And we had a crazy match for Deadlock Pro in North Carolina, and it was insane. If you like hardcore wrestling, this match, I wouldn't even call it a wrestling match. It's more like a horror movie. I'm very, I'm very much hanging my head on that. I will toot my horn all night about that one. Um, also, really just anything. Like uh, Most of the stuff that you find on YouTube, I feel like is it, or Actually, I just had a great match with Flip Gordon uh, last week on NWA Power. That's very recent, so... Check that out. 
I haven't yeah, had a chance to see it myself yet, but you mentioned the the match of Cruel being being like a horror movie, and that kind of you know, caught my attention. Uh, just to lean into that a little bit. What what about it kind of made it uh, like what, what what was the connection there? Is that was a very like brutal or violent, or like, what kind of uh, what can fans like kind of look for in that one that that brings of a of a, of a horror movie? Um, if you're familiar with Matt, uh, with Cruel or Matt Kruger at all, like he's a very He's, uh, I think he's like six, seven or something. He wears a very intimidating mask. He's like, what I, what I tell people, uh, is that he's the indie wrestling's king for, of this day. But like, if he was, if Kane did death matches, um, and we, we didn't even have so much of a wrestling match as much as it was just a chaotic fight. Like there wasn't the only pin that happened in the match was the last one that caused the end of the match. Um, and it was more like I was fighting for my life rather than fighting to win. Like it was just, it was very, it's very hard to describe, uh, without, without spoiling too right, much for right. those who want to watch it. But, uh, I'm very proud of that match. Well, I'll definitely check it out. And I, based on that, I recommend everyone else does as well. So going back here, we got NWA Hard Times Street this weekend, November 12th on Saturday. It's going to air on Fight TV. You're going to be challenging Dave Richards for the MLW National Openweight Championship. To circle back, I mentioned when you got to the NWA, you want to win a title. And you do, you have your sights set on the NWA Junior Heavyweight title. But what would winning, what, what would winning the MLW National Openweight title mean to you, especially by a me because that would mean defeating the guy you, you had said was your number one guy, uh, Dave Richards. Dave, Dave Richards in that match. Well, I guess if I win the MLW title, I'll just have to go to MLW for a little bit too, and I'll have to wrestle some of the guys they got there. Uh, the talent they have there is pretty crazy. Like the J uh, Jacob Fatu and Alexander Hammerstone would love to get in the ring and tear it up with them. So, uh, definitely open to the possibility of what winning an MLW championship would entail for Colby Carino. And one, one more time here, what can fans expect to see when Colby Carino faces Dave Richards this weekend and it'll be a hard time to do As you mentioned, you have your own kind of style of wrestling. We all know that uh, Dave Richards, uh, again, a veteran, a guy, that's, as you said, that really embodies a very physical style of wrestling here. But what can fans kind of look forward to seeing in that match on Saturday? So, like, I've, I've grown up watching Davey Richards have all these classics with people like Seth Rollins and Eddie Edwards and Roderick Strong. And it, all those matches, they're, they're hard-hitting. They're intense. There's, a, there's just a sense of urgency throughout. They, like, it just it, it feels like a real competition. And that's going to be a part of the match on, on uh, Saturday. But not only that, I'm not here to emulate the matches that they did. I'm not here to, to be a cover band playing the greatest hits of whatever band of last year. I'm here to to write the new hits. I'm I'm here to write some new music, and uh, I'm not I'm not here to make a match that it lives up to the level of those matches. I'm here to make a match that surpasses them and goes even farther. I want to have the best match that David Richards has ever had, not just the best match that I ever had. You know. Very much looking forward to a, a, another classic, a new classic for you and for David Richards here this weekend. Uh, Colby, if anybody that wants to follow you on social media and whatnot, where can they do that on Facebook, Twitter, what, or or elsewhere? And then given what's going on these days, where, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Colby Carino, Instagram at Colby Carino, no spaces, no nothing. Uh, at Instagram at Colby.Carino, because some girl uh, got at Colby Carino and is inactive on it, which I got to do something about that. Um, I'm not on the TikTok, but I am on the Pro Wrestling Tees. So ProWrestlingTees.com slash Colby Carino. Buy some cool shirts. And uh, yeah. That's and everybody, all. Hard Times 3, November 12th, be on Fight TV. You can see Colby Carino challenging Dave Richards for the MLW National Open Way Championship. Colby, I wish you the very best of luck in that match moving forward. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.